Okay, parallel filtering is EQing. And uh, the difference is that the possibilities are a bit wider, so you can enhance it and you can add elements to it and shape it to your liking. But the basic principle isn't different. Um, if you put a filter and mix it to the source signal, that's an EQ. And in this video, I'm gonna uh, prove this if it's a if it's it needs to be proved. But yeah, we will talk about this, and I will show some examples. And uh, this note here is a spectrum analyzer. It's really just a spectrum analyzer with like anyone, but the signal that goes in is matched to the uh, block size of the FFT and uh, in each, in this case 2048 samples, we have one sample which is on zero dB and all the others are in negative infinity, which uh, yeah, basically looks like um, these. So this creates a straight line on any uh, spectrum analyzer. And on the scope, this way we get the uh, <coughs> the impulse response. So this is the frequency response and this is the impulse response. And um, the first thing that we are going to check is going to be a one pole filter, a one pole low pass filter. So let me plug this in, take this lower. And um, yeah. If you're not familiar with uh, modular um, environments and if you are into this kind of... Uh, if you are interested in this kind of patching and and in this parallel uh, editing of uh, things and um, a bit more DSP stuff than, than just uh, turning knobs um, on some presets then I think it's a good idea to dive into uh, modular synthesis or or the or, or working with modular em environments because they offer a lot more possibilities and, and make things more straightforward even if looking at them may be a bit uh, more involved so we have a filter here and you can see that uh, the impulse response is changing and also that the frequency response is showing what, what, what happens and uh, what happens if we add the source to these so if you mix these yeah we get 6 decibel boost above uh, below the passband and uh, above it everything stays as it was on 0 dB and as you can see in the 6 decibel per octave filter which is a one pole filter there's no dipping in the in the uh, frequency response so this works nicely um, and this way we have a basic eq that's on, that only can do 6 decibel of boost um, how can we turn this to be a real eq so one thing that we can do is to multiply the uh, filters output by a value let's say between 0 and 1 and if it's 0 then we do not add anything if it's 1 then we have the 6 dB boost which is fine um, but I don't think that this is what we want because if we go to minus 1 here so if the lowest value is minus 1 that's not symmetrical and, and this is really hard to control but a part of this, this really is just uh, a proper EQ, so you can see that you can set it to any value that you want, just the scaling is strange. But uh, that's easy to fix. If you think a bit differently, like if you don't do not add this to the source, but if you add the high pass and low pass filters together, then you obtain the same signal as the input. And this way, multiplying the low pass with a linear value that's corresponding to, um, let's say, uh, some logarithmic value, let's say between minus 12 and 12 decibels, like this. 
then we can get into the proper shelving EQ. So this is a six decibel per octave shelving EQ and it's just perfect. So there's nothing wrong with it. It just works. Uh, and this currently looks like this is not parallel filtering since we are not using the this source at all. But we can do it. It's, it's just as much as uh, we remove the high pass and uh, we invert the source and actually this we added here um no um, one moment sorry so now <laughs> we subtract the low pass from the source okay I, I don't know why i did this inversion it was just a grammatical failure in my head so if we subtract the low pass from the the source signal then we can raise by 12 decibels and minus 12 and i think this is better processing this way we just create our own high pass filter here and i can remove this here so now we have a basic uh one pore shelving filter and we did parallel processing and uh, yeah what if we introduce another filter so basically if we have two of these and let me undo this so here we have this patch if we have two of the one pore filters using the same cutoff and if I plug these here and these here, we get the dipping that can be seen on on Dan Warrior's video about uh, parallel filtering. And yeah, as you can see, two one-pole filters filtering each other is basically a two-pole filter. So four of these would be four-pole. And um, yeah, this is not rocket science. So, but uh, this way we do not have a resonance. We would have resonance if there was a subtraction here and we would um, multiply the output of this filter by some gain and feed it back to the subtraction and this would introduce resonance. And maybe... Yeah. I don't think that we want to do this this way because this is pretty much uh, not the idea thing this way because uh, filters are not that simple but basically this is what it does and let's introduce a state variable which is my currently favorite uh, two-pole filter um, it's a common design and it's pretty flexible and uh, that's used in most of the modern EQs and uh, yeah, um, earlier people used to use biquads and they are still in use but, but I prefer the state variables which are nice ones. So plug in the source, take a look at the low pass output, it looks like this and taking the Q lower gives resonance, higher, that changes the uh, roll off of the filter. And um, yeah, I set this back to two, which is the uh, standard position for a state variable. And let me create a small patch which converts the frequency to pitch. And I'm not going to use the cutoff slider, I'm going to use the this knob to set the frequency that just works and uh, yeah one thing that if we add all the three mm, outputs of the uh, state variable we get a flat uh, frequency response and one more uh, thing to note is that if we multiply the bandpass by 0.5 this is what a uh, regular state variable would look like. Um, my, it was my decision to double the 
the gain of the band pass output so we get this flat response and let's take a look at uh, what happens if we add some gain to the low pass so let's say if it's one then we are fine if it's two then oh we get the dipping but this way we can still uh, get the same behavior like uh, then what I had in his video let's say from minus 6 dB to 6 dB so we can take this lower and higher and but but but, but we have this deep thing which is uh, not a nice thing but yeah it's, it's pretty disturbing but one can live with it but we can do we can do better and uh, the but what I want to prove is that this stays the same if we remove this addition and we add it simply to the source signal like this except that that this way it's always added to the low pass content and here it wasn't so we have to subtract Um, the low pass filter and now now it is the same and we can get rid of the dipping um, because of the only need to add the low pass and the band pass to sum them and send them here and subtract them like this and if I change the resonance you see that the dipping is gone and I can subtract and add it but we have a bump here and uh, this is one of the reasons why I mentioned that our bump pass filter is uh, twice as strong as uh, in a standard uh, state variable because uh, if we multiply this by the power, if, if if it would be a regular state variable filter, then we would have to multiply the bandpass output with the uh, square root of uh, 2. But since this is twice as strong as a regular bandpass, we have to divide, uh, take the half of the square root of 2. So we are going to multiply the bandpass output like this. And this way, the dipping is gone, the bump is gone. Whoa. And this this really is just an analog style shaving EQ. Completely parallel filtering. So but it, it won't work that you will simply add the low pass uh, to uh, the dry signal, because that's going to uh, implement this phasing issue. But this way, you're nice, and, and this is fine. So. We have the cutoff at uh, 774, and if I increase the resolution of the of the uh, FFT and crank up the resonance, then you can see that it's measuring 773 hertz. So we are pretty close. So the filter is where it should be and everything is in place. So this is a nice shelving filter without dipping. And uh, if you take a look at modern uh, digital EQs, then you see a different response. Uh, you you see that it kind of uh, rotates, the, 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 if you change the resonance, then it kind of rotates around the cutoff frequency. Um, this curve here and 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 that uh, then you have also a dip if you change the resonance in uh, nowadays uh, shelving eqs and the reason for that is that they are not really shelving eqs at least in my opinion because for me this is a shelving eq um this is what it should look like yeah, at least in my opinion maybe i'm wrong but we can also take a look at how they work. So for that, we need to take a look at the bandpass uh, output first, because that's uh, 
very important part if you raise the Q or lower it then you can see that the lower the Q the higher the resonance on the bandpass output is and the higher the Q the lower it goes and we can actually fix the Q to zero decibels by simply multiplying the, the bandpass output by the resonance and uh, okay now it's on six decibels sorry and this way wow that's nice it's always uh, fixed and this is a nice thing but actually what we want to have is to keep this at zero decibels so yeah, as i told before our bandpass is twice as strong as the uh, normal state variable and the reason is that i wanted to have the flat response if all the bands are added but if we take a look at this now okay we are at zero db just by having the gain of the bandpass output and that's quite nice and if we sum these so take the high pass and take the low pass like this and if we sum these then we get the flat response once again but let's multiply the high pass and also the low pass by some value and uh, we want to boost the low pass so we will simply plug the uh, decibel to linear uh, converter so this goes from a logarithmic value to a linear value into this multiplication and if we give it a value between let's say minus six and six decibels then we see that it's raising and lowering and that's kind of what we want and let's give the opposite to the high pass um, no not there sorry this is my bad like this so the opposite value complete completely and wow it's turning And if we move the resonance, that's what I talked about, that it's rotating this nicely around the cutoff and has this symmetrical shape. So this is what modern e uh, EQs look like and this is basically how they work. And this is called a tilting. So uh, this is a tilting EQ because of it kind of tilts around the um the cutoff point but this is not the final uh, thing yet because of this is still just tilting uh if i raise the uh amplitude of these uh of one uh bend so let's say if we raise this to four decibels then you see that okay this is on four decibels but here we are on minus four which is not what we want at all so we want to compensate here and that's fairly simple to do we just need to uh, multiply the signal by this boost so now we are at zero and this is on the twice of it uh, so we need to multiply this whole thing by 0.5 or divide by 2 that's the same thing and that's not not good so no not not like this um sorry <coughs> confused so this is four minus four um so it would be probably a good idea to multiply this by the 0 0.5 and then and then multiply here by this value like this and maybe this looks complicated and a bit hard to follow <coughs> but as you can see we have four decibel rays here and zero there so and and above the pass band we are always at zero decibels and everything works fine so this is uh, a modern shelving eq 
or what you can uh, see in nowadays software mostly and you have still this nice tilting around the cutoff point and it just works nicely so this is another way to create shelving EQs <coughs> and of course uh, this is not parallel processing because we are not adding to the uh, source here this is just to show how it works and uh, yeah this is just a two-pole filter a two-pole EQ but actually um, this is such a simple thing to convert into a four pole that I put this whole thing in, into a designer now and uh, let's take a look um, I, I believe this was the one pass input uh, okay that's not the first thing to do uh, yeah here comes the high pass I forgot where it was. This will be the band pass. And this is going to be the low pass. And I cut this knob and create another input for decibels. And this will be the output. And this is filter to EQ. And this is valid for all the other methods that we did today. Um, just left with this for the, the time being and now this is a an EQ and I did something wrong here um, high pass ok, band pass, low pass da, 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 da. everything seems to be fine then why is it looking bad? Probably. Oh, there's no resonance coming in, which is required. Yeah, the resonance should be here. So this will be easier to see like this. Yeah, sorry, my bad. So resonance, and now it's it's okay. And uh, yeah, I like to pass some values towards the next uh, the next um, nodes to show how easy th this is to to build a higher level EQ. So this this is just the inputs passed further. No, this is not required, sorry. My bad again, I just want to send the decibel forward. And the rest is not required. So then we put another filter here. Same inputs, same pitch and resonance. And then we convert these to the same EQ. And the output should be a steeper filter. But with twice the gain, so here we have to compensate each time we insert a new uh, row. Mm, no, that's not nice. We have to compensate inside for the gain change, so probably here we have to go with 0.25. And then here also with 0.25. Yeah, this is it, but then this is not uh, two pole anymore. So this is the four pole uh, EQ, and it just works. With the tilting method. So I think this is enough for today. We did a lot of EQs with parallel filtering and without parallel filtering and with tilting but even here parallel filtering is still valid because we are using three different uh, filter types even if one filter produces them at in one uh, loop but 
the point is that uh, combining filters with the source is not forbidden at all and it makes totally sense and that's the way EQs are built. So, and the, the reason why this is fun in this modular environment is that yeah, you can play around with stuff like inserting uh, some saturation in between the two filters, let's say, if you want to. Like you can multiply here by a value and uh, from 1 to 16 maybe and and then you have some uh, strange uh, asymmetrical shape and to compensate for the volume change you can divide by the same value so so you can do something pretty sick I don't know if this makes any sense, uh, but uh, with a real signal, it should. Uh, the linear linear analyzer won't show much about this. Maybe if you go higher, then it shows some aliasing or stuff, but I don't know. Uh, but the thing is that you can go really creative here and uh, can do lots of things that you will not be able to do with. Uh, non-modular software because it's so niche that it doesn't make sense to build a plugin around it so uh, the ones who need it mostly know what they do and uh, are mostly familiar with these concepts or should be um anyways this is a long talk now and i do not want to waste your time any further i hope this was uh, fun to watch or at least interesting and i hope it made at least somewhat sense and um, yeah Thanks for watching. Bye bye.